Hi, this is John from the Ring Lord. I'm going to be making a piece of round scale fabric. And I have here the round scales that we're using. And we're joining them with a 18 gauge, 5 32nd of an inch bright aluminum. The size is fairly important. If you use a bigger ring than 5 32nds, it, the uh, fabric becomes a little bit floppy. If you use a tighter ring, then it becomes pretty much impossible to, to uh, get the ring in, in place. So it's fairly ring specific, and we strongly recommend 18 gauge 5 30 seconds. So basically it is an oriental four in one weave. Uh, there, is, there is one complicating factor that your rings need to be laying on top of each other just so, making the, making the scale look. But we're just starting by making a thin strip, just like so. So really it's just one and one. And you can't get the first one wrong, but when you're doing the when you're adding your third scale, you can see that we can we can put the scale either on the top of this ring, giving us sort of a, a corduroy effect or on the bottom, giving us the correct scale effect. Now there's nothing saying that you have to use these round scales in this recommended scale pattern, but still, that's what I'm teaching and that's what uh, gives it the, the fish scale look. Okay, I'm going to call that good for the first strip. And my favorite way of making this is connecting it together thin strips. You could weave it, like I could just start on the second row. And there's certainly nothing wrong with, with adding to the piece of fabric one, uh, one scale at a time. Now, connecting together two strips. So now we have to overlap in two directions. So not only are we overlapping, say, in this direction left to right, we're also overlapping up and down. And in order to look the most scale-like, we want all of our overlaps, like our overlap from one row to be the same as the overlap in the next row. So you can see that this is the correct way of doing it. Oh, I should have demonstrated the incorrect way first, but I just sort of guessed. You can see that in this row we have scales to the left are on top of scales to the right, and in this row 
scales to the left or on top of scales to the right, just, just the way that we want it. And since this is our first addition row, we can, it doesn't really matter which which way we overlap the, uh, the individual rows. Sometimes it's easier to pick the thing up, but a little harder to demonstrate. Now I'm going to jump ahead and try to and attach this piece to this three strip wide piece that I already have. Now let's just try to match up the overlaps. Okay, so my rows are overlapping the right way. But Oh, that's not right either. Alright, how about that? It's overlapping right that way. No. Yeah, you should never have a row that's all on top. Well, that row's all on top. <laughs> Might have been better of, better off adding this one strip at a time. Now, in my defense, this is my second piece of making this ever. Nope. 
I think it is possible that there is no... Oh, hold on. Okay, that's on top of that. Oh, and a mismatch. Matched one way, mismatched the other way. Well, I think it's a whole lot easier to uh, to add on the uh, the single single row piece. So it may have happened there. I'm not the I'm not the best person in the world at matching up sort of three dimensional puzzles like this. But what might have happened is there might not have been a a, a correct answer. I think there's two possible ways that that a, a three-dimensional weave like this can work out and that you will never be able to, to join two pieces that, that don't have the same orientation. Much like joining 45 degree seams in, in European form. Let me be able to get this one then. By far the most challenging part of this weave is is just making sure you have your scales overlapping in the correct direction, and it certainly works. Like you can you can overlap your scales random directions, and it still works out just fine. Just doesn't quite have the right grain to it. strip at this point. But I'll see that I can show you the 4x4 four four wide. This, like a lot of Oriental 4 in ones, it's really cool. Sort of, like you pull the ends, let it, like this is how it would sort of hang with gravity. And you can see if it was 5x5, five five, it would make a, it would make a perfect diamond. Great for, well, 
Well, this is a fairly large earring, but it's a great dangly earring as it sort of hangs nice and diamond shape under under its own weight. And can also be used in like shirts, hand flowers, that sort of thing, either in this stretched orientation or in the sort of I guess natural uh, square formation. Now you'll notice in in this uh, we're using this 530 seconds the way that we've done it. You can see that you can't, like once there's a scale that's completely surrounded, you cannot get another scale around it. And um, and the fabric actually does have some stiffness. You can see it only will only bend that far before you're actually you need to open a open a ring before it bends any further. If you use bigger rings, a little piece here. This is using just a a three sixteenths of an inch ring. With a three sixteenths of an inch ring, you can you can slide one scale to the top or to the bottom just by angling it like this. And this, like nothing wrong with doing that, but you will never be able to sort of guarantee a sort of perfect scale alignment if you if you use too big of a ring. But it also becomes a lot more flexible and will fold back on itself and and does open up other options like other uh, you can, you can see from here, just here, you've got a, you've got sort of two layers and some more rings. You could basically have a sort of a, a little bit of a dragon scaly looking type thing where you've got that, that double, double layer going on. But use your imagination with these, with these uh, round scales, and I expect to see interesting new things uh, posted to the gallery. Okay, right, thanks for watching.